Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be doing a couple of tool reviews. These are some small convenient little items that are good to have around the house to make your life easier. Okay, so today we're going to be reviewing a couple of different items here. One is a voltage tester and the other one is an infrared thermometer. So let's go into detail and look at each one separately. Alright, let's start off with the simple one here. This is a really small, compact, but useful device to have around the house. Especially for DIY people like you and me. We do stuff around the house, we have an electrical problem, want to check something out, but you don't want to get hurt, and sometimes it's inconvenient to pull out, you know, uh, multimeter or some other ones like these that I have here where I have the two wires and you got to plug them in and hold it with both hands. We only have two hands, right? So holding these two and holding it up and looking at it can be a bit of a bother. So, you know, instead of this, how about this? This is the Ames non-contact AC voltage tester from Harbor Freight. And it is item number 63919 and it's only $5.99, but use a 20% off coupon on this, get yourself a freebie along the way. It costs peanuts, literally, and it can be quite useful when you're doing electrical stuff around the house. So it's easy to use, visual and audible alert, it lights up and it beeps. Uh, Self-test indicates tester is ready to use, CAT3 rated for use up to 600 volts, and it goes through a few little things on here. You know, all the things I basically described already. And it shows you there how it lights up. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. So it's very easy to use. I already opened it up to make it easier to take out. So it has a little button here that you press. That's the self-test right there. It checks itself every time to make sure it works. It has a little pocket clip, which is rather flimsy. I wouldn't put a lot of... Uh, I wouldn't really think that thing is going to last you very long, but who knows, I could be totally wrong. It is flexible, it is flimsy, but maybe due to its flexibility, it may hold out. But, who cares, really. What, what matters is, does it do the job, does it do it well? And uh, it's a nice orange color, so you don't lose it in your toolbox, unless it's upside down, where it's a black color, charcoal, so that's a little easier to lose. And it takes one AA battery, or AAA, I'm sorry, one AAA battery that it comes with it, but, you know, easy to replace, no big deal. And the speaker is right there, and the light is right here. So this is very convenient. Uh, I'll show you here. It, uh, I'm going to plug this in, and this one doesn't light up, but it is tur turned on right there. You see it's turned on. And this is very easy. All you do is it's plastic body, so there's no chance of being electrocuted or getting any kind of a nasty shock. The tip is also plastic. So no matter what you touch on here, you're safe. You don't even need to wear gloves like you see I'm not doing. Uh, let's see, all you do is this will tell you where the hot side is. It'll show nothing for the, uh, the ground. It'll show nothing for the neutral. And it'll show, it'll give you an audible and visual alert for the hot side. And that's really what you want with AC. You're not worried so much about the ground. You're worried about the hot side. Now on these, I don't know about this one. We'll see right now. But on these plastic extensions, what this is doing, let me explain a little bit. What this is doing is checking the field of energy of the electric current. Some of these things are not very well insulated, so you don't even have to plug it in to get a reading. Sometimes just getting it close to it will give you a reading. So it won't be very specific. It's not the fault of the tool. It's the fault of these items because this is just a plastic housing with copper connectors on both sides. So the field is generating around this whole thing and this will pick it up. Let's see on this one, but I know on some other ones I've gotten some readings just putting it close, not even putting it in. The wall outlets are much better made, better construction due to, you know, fire prevention and all that. So the wall outlets, you do have to put it in to the hot side to get a reading or touch a live wire to get a reading. But let's see on this one. We'll see right now exactly what it does. See, I'm holding it far away. We'll see how close before I get a reading. See, I don't even need to get close. See, 
I don't even need to get that close to it. Just the energy field that it produces will, let's see right there. You start off far away and you get close to it and it tells you that it has current. Now I turn this off, it goes off. Turn it on and it goes on. Off, it goes off. So that tells you it's, it's, the, the tester is doing its job. It's not faulty. I'm not criticizing the, the, the tester. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. This is the, the culprit right here. So I'm showing you. Turn it on. Get close. It reads the field of energy. Now I'm going to, in a minute, I'm going to shoot it down here reading from the wall outlet itself and you'll see it's much more accurate. But it's a good device for uh, three, four dollars roughly. I recommend it. It's a good little thing to have in your pocket for DIY people like us. I'm sure industrial people are not going to bother with this, but for you guys like me at home, I think it's a good thing to have. You need to see what's wrong. Just test it with this first. And if you're not satisfied with the reading that this gives you, you can go further from there on. But sometimes this will be good enough and you don't need to worry about getting electrocuted or shocked or anything nasty like that. Okay, so I pulled the camera down here so we can get a closer look at the wall outlet and I'll show you how this unit works much better with a wall outlet than it does with a uh, extension. So you see I'm going to press it, shows you it works. You see I can get close to it and no false readings anywhere around it. You actually have, then here there's no, let's see, that's the ground, no false reading. That's the negative side, no false reading. And when you put it on the positive, you get a reading. So there is no electrical field going on here like the plastic extensions. In the wall unit itself, you're going to get a much better reading from this device than from any external type of thing. Show you again. On. Negative, no reading. Ground, no reading. Positive, reading. That tells you right there, that is the hot side right there. So that goes to show you how well this little device actually works. Okay, so we finished up with that one. Let's move on to the thermometer. Now, this is a non-contact infrared thermometer, Ames, from Harbor Freight. It's 12 to 1 infrared thermometer and it reads in Celsius and Fahrenheit. It is item number 63985 and normally sells for $26.99 but sometimes you can get a coupon on this. Um, I got it with a coupon for $17.99 I think it was. Uh, maybe in the future it might go even lower but right now the cheapest I saw was $17.99 so that's what I got it for. It has a uh, you know, excellent readability indoors and outdoors because it is backlit. It has a backlit display, impact resistant case, high visibility laser for targeting, switchable between Celsius and Fahrenheit, and it gives you some specifications here on the back. But most people aren't going to be concerned with that. I already cut this open and it uses a 9 volt battery. Did not come with a 9 volt. I popped it in there just so we could do this right now. So pop it in there and the buttons back here are for selecting Celsius, Fahrenheit. You can turn the laser on or off. You can turn the backlight on or off. So that's what it's all for. And there is really no on off switch except right here. So when you're ready to go, you see it's off right now. You just push this, the button right here, push it and it comes to life. See, it comes to life right away. You don't even need to hold it. I just clicked it and it comes to life. So then you point it at whatever you want. Right now, I have it set to Celsius because we're going to do a little comparison on uh, with a, another thermometer that I have, a contact thermometer. Normally, I would use Fahrenheit because I'm American, and uh, that's what we normally use here. But I couldn't find my Fahrenheit industrial thermometer, but I have a Celsius industrial thermometer. And this is a quality thermometer. It's made by Taylor. And this is something my dad used to use for his work many, many, many years ago. This probably dates back to the 1980s. So it's probably very good quality compared to some of the stuff you would get nowadays. And he used this for industrial use. This is not a meat thermometer, okay? Put that out of your mind. It's not a meat thermometer. So we have a couple things here that I've set up. 
Here's some water that I boiled a few minutes ago, and here's some water that I have in ice. So let's have a little fun here. Let's see, on the uh, boiling water, let's see how high this goes. Give it a moment to get up to temperature, and then we'll test it with this guy. See how accurate it is. Now this is not going to be 100% accurate. Obviously a contact thermometer will always be a lot more accurate. But sometimes it's not convenient to have in contact with what you want to read. So these can come in really, really handy. And it says on here, caution, laser. You don't want to point it at your eyes or anybody else's eyes because it is a laser. It can hurt people. So let's say you don't have a contact thermometer. You don't want to, st you don't want to stick your hand into boiling water. Let's say it's something more toxic or dangerous. Non-contact thermometer comes in really, really handy. So this one is reading right now 60 degrees. And if you can see it right there, 60 degrees Celsius. And it went down really quick. We pop it back in here. It is at 60 degrees Celsius right there. And it goes down really quick. Now let's see what this guy says. It says 57. That's not too bad at all. From 57 with no contact, 60 with contact, I mean, that's within the frame of uh, error, within the margin of error. 57.2, that is pretty darn good. So, and it's, you know, reading through the water there. So you can see, I mean, you can be far away. The laser is the pointer. It tells you, the laser, by the way, is the pointer. It is not the thermometer itself. So it's pretty darn good. That's not bad. All right, let's test something different. Here we have water with ice cubes in it. You can see the ice cubes are still in there. It is freezing cold water. Let me wipe this off. Okay, I wiped it off. It is down to uh, 40 degrees. So, get some of the heat off of there. And unfortunately, this one only goes down to 30. This one will go down much, much further than that. Actually, let me tell you exactly. The measurement range on this thermometer is minus 50 degrees Celsius to approximately 550 degrees Celsius. It's right on the back of the box here. And you can see it on the site if you want to as well. And the accuracy is give or take 7 degrees in Fahrenheit and give or take 4 degrees in Celsius. So it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. So let's try. Now, this one only goes down to zero. So once it gets to zero, it'll bottom out. We don't know anything beyond that. And zero Celsius is pretty darn cold. It's not getting all the way to zero. It's getting pretty close. So let's see what uh, this one says. We're down to, uh, what is it, like two or three degrees there? That's pretty cold. Let's see here. Yeah, it reads one, two, three, yeah, about three, three to four degrees. I'll show you right there. Three to four degrees, that is pretty darn cold. I wouldn't want to be in there. All right, let's see what this one, this one right here says. And it is reading. Yeah, nine degrees. It, I mean, again, within the margin of error, but it tells you pretty darn good what you're down to. I, actually, wait a minute. No, that's, it's reading one degree because I'm touching the, the ice cube. Let's put it on the water itself. 1.3 degrees. A lot more accurate than this one. But I'm having trouble getting it on the water without the ice cube. There we go. And this one's actually gone down further. What are you at? It's down to 2 degrees. Down to 2 degrees now. And this one is at 0.7. So, again, allowing for a little bit of discrepancy between 1 and... See, 1 degree there. One degree. Allowing for a little discrepancy between one and the other, contact, non-contact, that is pretty darn accurate. I'd say that is pretty good. I mean, that shows you that it holds on to the high reading. This one changes instantly, but that holds on to the reading, your last reading, right there. That is pretty darn good. So we tested the really, really cold and the really, really hot, and it did fairly well. I think it is a good device. Uh, as far as accuracy goes, I mean... You're, you're not a NASA scientist. You're not a student doing experiments at school or something. 
it doesn't have to be extremely precise for the homeowner. We're not building rockets here, okay? We're not going to the moon. This is just for the homeowner doing stuff at home. Uh, testing your car, testing your refrigerator, taste, testing your AC coils and stuff like that. Not too bad. For 17 bucks, I would say it's a fairly good unit. So uh, this Ames one from Harbor Freight, I say is a fairly decent product. Uh, well within the margin of error, I'd say it's a, it's a go. It's a thumbs up. So that wraps it up for these two. Let's, uh, let's go look at something else that I recommend as a do not buy. Okay, let's try to do this one as a voice narration because uh, I went outside to shoot the video and the neighbor's dog would not stop barking. So the item that we're talking about here is uh, the Greenwood Hose, item number 63335 from uh, Harbor Freight. And uh, I've had this for over a year now, and it is definitely a do not buy. I do not recommend it at all. Even at $20, it may be cheap, but the quality is just not there. I'm going to show you right now. Uh, the day that I shot this, it's a very warm day. It's about 80 degrees outside. The plastic is very warm. You can see this sits in the sun all day long, and it is still stiff as a board. I'm having to fight this hose just to get it to move. And you'll see I put a little extension tip on it because it is more convenient. Look how flexible that is. It bends with no effort whatsoever. It is super easy to bend. While the hose itself, it is so difficult, so hard, so stiff as a board. There's no other way to put it. If you enjoy fighting with your hose, then go ahead and buy it. it it's supposed to be industrial quality, but it's just annoying quality is what it is. Look how it stays coiled up. It will not release it will not cooperate so unless you really enjoy the frustration of fighting with your hose i would say do not buy it i leave it coiled up and i never use it that's why it's on the side of my house do not buy stay away from it very poor quality okay so there you go so we just did a review of a couple of useful little devices uh, i would say these are both good as far as uh, buys i would recommend them very useful uh, they do the job that they're meant to do. They're inexpensive. I would recommend them thumbs up, one for each one. Thumbs up. I would say it's a good buy. So these two are a buy. The hose that I showed you a moment ago, that is a do not buy. It is a total pain in the backside. Do not buy it. I have it and I will never buy it again. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it helped you out. Hope it pointed out some good things for you and some things to stay away from. And click that like button, click that subscribe button, and ring that bell. Hopefully, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for hanging out with me in the shop. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye for now.